It feels so great being at Bush Gardens. I'm happy and I'm frustrated. And you'll see why right after this intro. What is going on guys? This is Dylan from We The Coasters and we are here at Busch Gardens Tampa getting ready to explore this awesome park that I love that I'm at where it's my home park and I'm literally like 45 minutes away from it. It's a blessing. Um, the weather by the way, I just want to say is beautiful right now. That is amazing. So you're probably wondering by the title of this video where I'm happy to be here and happy and excited to announce some news to you but I'm also kind of frustrated. I'm going to talk more about that once I get into the park because there's a lot of details I want to talk about and one certain attraction is finally going to reopen and uh, we're going to head over there right now to talk about that. But as you can see we have entered the park. Not much of a wait to get in because it is a little after 11 o'clock and the park is open from 10 to 6 but let's talk about the attraction that is going to reopen as of making of this video tomorrow Friday February 2nd. Now the sky ride is finally going to reopen as of making this video like I said tomorrow February 2nd. Now let's give a little brief history about the sky ride with Busch Gardens Tampa. This has been a staple of the park for so many years. It is a great transportation ride. It, honest opinion, I like that better than the train. That's just my honest opinion. But overall, it's been closed since 2020, once the pandemic came out and they were needing parts left and right, which, you know, that is so unfortunate there. But regardless, they finally got the parts, they painted the cars, they've been testing within uh, the last couple of weeks, and now finally it's going to reopen tomorrow, which I'm glad that's the case, but there's one problem that I have in it. One, it is going to be a premium attraction for non-pass holder people. What do I mean by that is very simple. So for the people who come into the park, if you're a pass member, you can get in for free, no problem. If you are not a pass member, you have to pay five bucks. And I don't like that. That's just kind of a little, just not that good. It just does not feel like a good marketing strategy to convince people whatnot. It's been free for so many years and now you're wanting to charge it as a premium. Kind of like the Sky Tower. Although I do get the Sky Tower to a degree. And apparently what I'm aware of is that SeaWorld San Diego Skyride also has charged people money. And there's a six bucks, which is still very, uh, not that good to say the least. So if you're a person that's visiting from Georgia, who is not a pass member or anywhere else, and you come out to ride it, well, guess what? Now you gotta pay five bucks. Sorry about your luck. And that's very sad and ridiculous, but you know, I just don't agree with the decision making, but I know the parks are trying to have a better look, but right now it's just not been good for uh, Bushard and Stampa to say the least in my humble opinion. Well, it looks like Cheetah Hunt broke down, so that sucks to say the least. Now, for my sake, this is the last time we are seeing all this area being closed for the sky ride, which is awesome to say the least. So by the time next time I will be back, all of this will be gone, and this will be reopened, which I can see they have added uh, some new paintwork on the entrance and exit sign for the sky ride, which is awesome to say the least. And the signs are here. So these are the new signs that they have here, as you can see. So. They have it in English just over here, and then the very bottom they have some Spanish about information and whatnot. And really cool designs where they talk about how many can ride the sky right here. So they have three here you can ride for regular adults, and then three with a small child that's there. So it's really cool how they're adding this on there. And the one major aspect is this giraffe right where the Y and the R are. So that's very nice how they've done a nice little refresh there, and more information that's on it right here. But still, very nice to say the least. But I know what you're asking. Why would I be that upset? Dylan, you're a pass member. You can technically ride it. And you know, yeah, that's technically true. I am. But the problem I have is, again, this used to be a free attraction for pretty much anyone. Now it's like you're free for pass member, which is an incentive there, but that just still kind of seems like something that just doesn't seem right. You know, I've been coming here for over 20 years, but I feel like the decisions within this park as a whole 
really have gotten backwards to the point where it's just, I don't understand what they're trying to do. The prices here are more expensive than Disney and even SeaWorld Orlando. And it just, it doesn't make sense. So I do hope eventually they fix this issue but they need to stop clearing the direction where they're going right now because it's getting bad. And now also with the name change coming along the way from SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment to United Parks, it just, I don't know. The future is not looking good within this park alone. That's why I say SeaWorld has a better promising future than Bush. So I hope Bush gets their act together and they fix some of these problems because they are not really doing a good job of pleasing the customers there. Because, you know, again, charge of five bucks for a sky ride, ride outside of the past members, that's not good at all. That's very, very bad. Bush needs to listen to those customers like Universal has to theirs, and they need to fix the problems right there and stop being so penny pitching because that's not good at all. But let's get out of the negatives. Let's talk about some other stuff going on by, like Cobus Curse being a 15 minute wait. Wow, but I see people leaving the line, so I have a feeling it just broke down, so yikes. <laughs> Never mind for that 15 minute wait. But we can ride the best being a Minford of all time in Montu. Let's head to that right now. Alrighty, so I did Montu not too long ago in the back row. That was fun, it was awesome, it was great. So, very, very cool. Now we're heading to Iron Quasi, the greatest roller coaster of all time. Right now standing at a five minute wave. That means we get to marathon this bad boy. This is a good time to do Iron Quasi because, well, the park is dead, which is awesome. And ready to get our rides on, which by the way, I got to meet some people that I uh, haven't seen in about uh, a year or two. A couple guys that do some uh, photography and all that from Instagram. So it's good to see those guys, which I'll probably be riding eventually with. And then, uh, Speaking of which, there it goes. By the way, I want to give a big shout out to one of my buddies out there, Kalen, who actually hit over 5,000 rides on Iron Gwazi. He is the guy that has ridden Iron Gwazi most. Speaking of the devil, there he is, right. Gotta love it. All right, let's hop on. All right, after riding 13 rides in a row on Iron Gwazi, marathon that ride, the ride literally just broke down. So. I got everything I asked for, literally front, middle, back, anywhere. There was no line, easy to marathon, but I am starting to get lightheaded and right as I got off the ride, the ride broke down. So that literally worked to perfection and I am not upset about that. I am satisfied with that, like 13 rides <laughs> in a row. Even like the point where the ride was just nothing, there was just like, you can literally get off the ride, chill in the eggs a little bit, and Hop right back on. That's what's awesome. So those ride-offs are awesome. I love them, they are fantastic. They know me very well. And goodness you guys, you guys absolutely rock. Now Mardi Gras, which is the event going on right now at Bush Yard Sampo. So as the time of making of this video, it is not going on today because it is a Thursday, but it will be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So they do have booths all around the area here, which you know you can see from here down towards where Gwazi is at. And of course, even down a little bit this way as you head over to the other areas to eat. Well, there would be, but not the case this year. And then you can see on the map where they are here, nine booths, or actually uh, 10 booths rather, where the 10th is actually uh, 11, my apologies. So they're actually over here within the end of where they're at and all, but still, this is where they're at for this year. Very small, rather. That's um, kind of surprising, to say the least. Shikra, currently a 15-minute wait. I have a feeling they're only running like one or two trains for the ride, so interesting enough. Now over at the Stanley Falls Flume, they did not have this advertised as closed, but they do have a sign over by the front saying that it is closed. Still in routine annual maintenance. Sorry for the inconvenience, but take a look at this. though. new painted area around here for the front entrance. It used to be like gray and blue and black, and now it's gray and green on the top, which is rather interesting. Looks nice though. And speaking of which, Lagoon is still drained over here. But you can tell when they painted it, how much it was used. You can see where that brown is all around here, where the water would come up and all that. And where the logs also would 
you know, make its little point of contact from the ride and whatnot. But yeah, they're gonna have some work done there. So, just wanna showcase that real quick. Um, I don't know when this will actually be reopening, but it should be very soon though. So, just wanna show real quick the new area around Staleyville for the Skyride Station. So, of course, they mentioned that it is testing right now, and it's been testing literally all day. It will open as of making this video tomorrow on Friday. So we'll see how it is by the time I upload the video. But as you can see, they have a brand new sign over here. It used to be brown and whatever colors would be for the original sky, right? Now it is blue for the main sign over here with the giraffe on here. And then the ride regulations, the same as before over in, uh, not Nairobi, but um, Nairobi, Egypt, around that area. We see there's a lot of team members there hanging around the area, just making sure everything is looking all smooth, making sure they are ready to go for tomorrow. But you can tell they are ready. They have been testing this thing all day like crazy. Actually, they've been testing within the last few weeks. So, unfortunately, I will not be here tomorrow, but cannot wait, though. Congo River Rapids. This area is actually open up. Opens at 11, closes at 6. Let's go in. And speaking of Congo River Rapids, there it is. Not many people are on it today, but this is probably the fullest of uh, an actual uh, raft. Excuse me, I had a hiccup there. That we'll ever get to see today but wow and this is new actually they have new blasters here where you can use game cards it looks like it's a dollar per use so remember it is no longer cash you have to use a cash by card and they have looks like six in use here yep six so there's number six right over here number five Congo River Rapids, you don't really get wet a whole lot, so if no one's on these, well, there's a good chance you probably will not get wet, so unfortunate. Only one show today for Animal Tales. It's at 3.30, which as of right now, the show already concluded, so that's it for today. A bit of a side note, Falcon Fury, yep, it intimate. Oof. Phoenix Rising, the new coaster coming in 2024. As here we are at the construction site for this year, the new b and family invert. Not a lot of information still what's going on. Let's see what we can find though. So at least from what I'm seeing, they've got some footers installed in there. And I know you're not going to see a whole lot. There was a lot of plywood over here. And more foundations being set up as well. A couple of pipes like sewage. And nothing else too major. Now the track is actually somewhere near Kumba within that region you can see a little bit through the hole there nothing too crazy but not a lot to show so i'm gonna try to do a little uh, aerial view you can see it right about now well right as they say falcon's fury had an instant moment it's now back open so it's a walk on so this is new. Rita's has also opened at Busch Gardens Tampa, adjacent from Dragonfire Grill. And funny enough, they still have the dragon out here. So I guess this is temporary, permanent, question mark. I'm not too certain. But here's Rita's. And from what I can see, same price as SeaWorld Orlando. But this is brand new. This just opened up a few days ago as I'm making this video. So that's good to see that's here. Definitely when I uh, have a bit of a nap time, I'm gonna try that custard cookie sandwich. That looks really good. $7.99 for that, by the way. Before we get to Serengeti Flyer, do you wanna show, there is a sky ride going off in the background here. There is an ambassador I do see that's up there. You can see some of the older cars that we're seeing here. You see where number 39 is, this orange car. This is one of the cars that got repainted. So some has got repainted, you can tell by some of the colors. And then you'll see like the yellow one that's coming up here. That's another one that's actually getting repainted. Or had actually. But finally, so making this video, tomorrow will open up, but it'll be back sooner than later. Serengeti Flyer, currently a five minute wait. Let's hop on. All right, just did a ride on Serengeti Flyer, which I just want to say by itself, that ride was awesome. So there's a weird thing that happened. So I was going to run one side, which is fine because you know, it's not that packed. It wouldn't make sense to run two sides. But um, 
the weird thing was that somebody had a phone out prior to when the ride began. So they kind of like stopped running the ride, which was smart. And the ride, I basically had to tell everyone like, hey, do not pull your phone out out there. And then you got people vaping on the ride too. So go figure. It, it's unfortunate. Those people that vape. But anyways, um, we got the most important rides out of the way that we need to do. So probably go back to Iron Gwaz and get a couple more rides before I head out of here. Alright, we finished up with Iron Gwazi, last train of the night. That was awesome. It's probably like, what, the seventh time I've done that, but that ride at night, or at least when it has the last train aspect, it is just unbelievable. It is truly one of those rides you have to experience at night, or at least the last train, and you just feel all the energy that's there. It's awesome. Love it. And uh, I'm thinking with all the, the ride ops that are there for that attraction, um, I know they've known me for ever since the ride grand opened, and uh, truly, I'm thankful and blessed. So, thank you guys for watching. If you like, be sure to give a like, subscribe. You're brand new to the channel. Hit that bell if you any future uploads. Follow us on all of our socials Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads. Until then, thank you guys for watching. This is Dylan from Way the Coasters signing on off. I'm out of here. Until then, rock and roll, everyone. Deuces. See you guys later. Peace.